Hi, this is Ed Kohler with Extreme Networks, and we're back with you for our fifth video in the series of setting up a Fabric Connect node and associated services. This video is going to focus on provisioning Layer 3 virtual service networks. Before we begin, it's always nice to get a definition of what we're talking about. Uh, Layer 3 VSN is really simply an ICID that is associated with a VRF, and the ICID replaces the traditional peering protocol architectures and methods all with this single elemental construct. So the ICID here is a very powerful tool. The result is an isolated IP forwarding domain that's totally separated from outside connectivity. And L3 VSNs therefore can replace effectively RFC 4364 BGP IP VPNs, which removes a lot of heavy lifting if I want to add that. A big bonus here is that L3 VSNs can very easily support isolated multicast environments. As a matter of fact, most of our customers who use L3 VSNs use them for that purpose. And the VSNs are relatively easy to set up when compared to traditional approaches. And again, that's because of the fact that we replace a lot of the peering methods with the single elemental construct. The other thing to remember, though, is that an ICID is based on Ethernet not IP. Therefore, we don't have an underlying IP service topology. So we get the added bonus that they're inherently more secure. Now, this is a traditional IP VPN BGP PE configuration that I just pulled off of the web. And you can see it looks rather traditional. We have our BGP settings, we have our VRF setups, uh, the route targets, the distinguishers, uh, the underlying peering mechanism and uh, IP addressing. And then we have to realize that all of this, before we can even talk about the service, requires a OSPF routed core before we can even start to do this. So there's a lot of setup before we can even talk about this command line sequence. In comparison, when we look at an L3 VSN, we have some similarities. Uh, we're setting up the two VRF environments. Uh, and you can see we have the two that we have in our lab, VidServe and IPTV. And you we're associating with the ICIDs rather than with traditional peering methods. And this is the key difference here. And it makes for a much shorter command line sequence because remember, we didn't have to set up an IP route and domain underneath in order to get that overlay to work. We did the first video which were really two commands. We set the prompt and then we ran the SPBM script. And from there, we could have very easily jumped to this exercise without any other setup. So L2 VSNs, any of that stuff, had not the show commands, all of that was really gravy. So we have to look at these again as independent elemental constructs. There's no protocol dependencies here. We didn't have to set up the L2 VSNs before we could start looking at L3 VSNs, in other words. So that's basically what we're going to do in this exercise is we're going to set up these VRS. Now, I've made it a little easier in the fact that I've taken and configured the VRF IPTV ahead of time. And if we move forward and look at our lab, we can see that these two VRFs exist in every other switch in my lab. I have taken and configured the red switch, which is the IPTV switch, and I've gone ahead and done that in switch four. We're going to do a quick show run to show you what an existing VRF configuration looks like. And then I'm kind of uh, going to reserve the rest of the command line sequence for the creation of uh, the VRF VidServe in ISID 5000. And just to be fair here, I have... Uh, already pre-configured the VLAN, so we don't have to go through that. You've seen that already from a command line sequence. It's, it's just a very simple thing. Okay, so with that, let me get my command line interface up, and you can see that we have switch four here. Uh, and again, we're going to look at everything from the perspective of switch four. And I'm just gonna do a quick show run command to display the configuration that I have within the switch already. And I'm going to move very quickly through this. I really just want to show the VRF specific configuration. So there we can see that I've, I have my VRF IPTV. A little bit further down, we come to VLAN specific information. And here you can see that I have a VLAN that I created of the number 640. I've assigned support members. Uh, assign that to VRF IPTV and give it an IP address. That, that actually makes this part of that VRF environment, not 
part of the GRT. And we can see that I have another VLAN, uh, VLAN 540, that I created as well. And that is what we're going to associate to our VRF that we create, which is going to be VRF VidSurf and ISID 5000. So let's move a little bit further down to some other VRF specific information, such as equal cost multipath. And we can see that we have that enabled. Uh, and a specification of a maximum path of four. Our loopback interfaces, and again, this is not required, but I like to do it, as I said in my previous video, because it gives me a status on the VRF itself, a uh, connectionless interface, if you will, and then I can use that for management, I can use it for CFM diagnostics and ping and things of that nature. I can also uh, determine which ones are active, which ones are not, and we, we kind of went through that in the uh, in previous videos. And the last piece we're going to take a look at is the actual IPVPN configuration itself, and that is where we go in and we specify our router VRF. Uh, we go into the IPVPN module and we basically set up our peering which is ISID 6000. After that, I went in and enabled multicast and then enabled IP forwarding. And then there's the redistribution commands and we'll kind of step you through those, uh, but they're fairly straightforward, just really redistributing direct and enabling that redistribution. So that's pretty much it. What we're going to do is we're going to go in now and set up an alternate VRF, and this is going to be the blue VRF because we already know the red one already exists. And I probably should have placed a router icon there, but anyway. so the blue VRF is what we're going to create, which is VRF VidServe, and we're going to associate that with ISID 5000. So the first thing we need to do is get into our configuration prompt. Once we're there, we'll get into our IP module and specify that we want to create a VRF, and we'll call this VidServe. Once we're done with that, we're going to create an interface. Again, notice I can short form a lot of these commands. And I'm going to use three, uh, because we use two for the IPTV. And once we have that, now we'll assign an IP address. And according to my scheme, I'm going to use a 192 prefix and a mask of 32. And we need to make sure that we specify the VRF that we want this connectionless IP address to be associated with. And we're going to specify that, obviously, as vidserve. Okay, now we're going to go into the interface of VLAN 540, and there we will associate this with the context of the VRF that we just created. And now we can give it an IP address. Notice how I am not associating an IP address directly to the VLAN on the GRT in this instance. I'm really associating it as a interface off the VRF. That's an important differentiation. And we'll give that the class. I, I just used 24 in the, uh, in the lab to make it easy. And once we have that, the last thing we'll do is we'll enable multicast within this subnet hanging off the VRF. Okay, so now we have our VLAN uh, and it's properly assigned to the VRF that we created and we've given it an IP address, we've enabled IP multicast. Now what we're gonna do, it, it, I wanna emphasize, we've enabled IP multicast on the subnet, okay? Um, we still have to do that on the VRF and the IP VPN. So let's move into, back into our VRF environment. And here, 
we're going to specify that we want to create an IPVPN. And we will now institute our peering, and that's going to be done over ICID 5000. And the next command is just to do an enablement of that IPVPN environment. And the last thing I want to do is I want to go in and enable multicast at the VRF level. Uh, remember, we've already done it at the, at the global level. And previously, we enabled it at the subnet level. And now what we're going to do is we're going to enable it at the VRF level. Once we have that, the last thing we want to do is set up, obviously, equal cost multipath. We definitely want to do that in a fabric architecture to maximize our service path potential. Once we're done with that, uh, the last thing we need to do is think about redistribution. So we run our ISIS redistribute direct command, uh, realizing that we are still in the context of router VRF vid serve. If we did this at the higher level, then we would just be running the shortcuts command. So here we're going to basically say that we want to do a redistribution direct. Note that we have a warning that uh, the routes will not be injected until the apply command is issued. And uh, we will do that uh, basically to close the video. Now, once we have this, uh, we will go in and say that we want to take the redistribution direct and we want to enable it. Then we want to exit out of that piece. And from the general configuration command prompt, we can then move in and run the command that we want to use ISIS and apply the redistribute direct command. And here we're going to add the context of the VRF that we just created. And that's it. We've completed creating a VRF, the associated VLAN and subnet that we want to have service off that VRF edge. We set up our peering. We enabled IP forwarding. We enabled multicast. We enabled equal cost multipath all within the command context that you see on this screen. Now we can do a couple things with the show commands, and that is the show IP, IP VPN. We can now see that we have two enabled, we, and we can see that I have two VRFs here after running that command, the IPTV uh, on ICID 6000, and then also the VRF VidServ, which is on ICID 5000. So that shows us that we have a successful configuration. The last thing I want to do is a show IP route for VRF vid serve as well. And we have our routes populated. We have visibility to the 10.50 10 network and the 10.5030 network. Remember, those were my active switches in the lab. In the switch number two, uh, they really don't have anything active, uh, so we're only seeing the loopback addresses. Uh, and we can see our own local interface as well for our loopback. And that kind of shows us that we have everything up and running and we're ready to go. The last thing I want to run is a show ISIS LSDB detail. But instead of uh, a detail of the whole database, uh, what are we looking for here? We're looking for just TLV 184. And then we'll say the detail command. And that shows us, again, validation of the fact that we have our VRFs up and running. We have the IPTV and the the VRF that we just set up. And that brings us to the end of our video. As you can see, we've set up the L3 VSN. We now have the two VRFs resident here uh, within switch number four, and that was the goal of what we wanted to accomplish. Thank you very much for your time. Our next video will be focusing on configuration and fault management. Now that we have our various services set up, uh, we're going to kind of walk through the CFM and also some associated uh, other diagnostic approaches in order to see what's going on within the fabric itself. So I hope you enjoyed this and uh, feel free to give it a try. Uh, set up your own private IPVPNs. Thanks. Take care.